So today we're going to be doing an experiment into electrolysis. Electrolysis is used to break down compounds using electricity. Now today we're going to look at copper chloride and sodium sulfate. The first thing you need to do is to fill your beaker about 50 centimeters cubed using the chemical you want. So we're going to start with copper chloride. Now once that's in, you need to make sure that the electrodes are submerged inside the liquid but not too close to the crocodile clips. As you can see, there's plenty of room between the crocodile clips and the top of the liquid. Next thing we're going to do is collect up the power pack. Now we want to go with about 4 volts for this practical. For your sake, we're going to use the red wire for our positive terminal. That will be our anode. And the black wire into the negative terminal, that will be our cathode. Now when we turn this on, we're expecting a reaction to take place. We're expecting to see some chemicals being formed or elements being formed at the different electrodes. So I'm going to turn this on and leave it to run. When you leave it to run, you need to leave it to go for about five minutes just to make sure you've got enough of the element to test it properly. And what we're going to do is look over that time period what happens in the electrolyte. Our electrolyte here is the copper chloride. The copper chloride contains both copper ions, which have a 2 plus charge, and chloride ions, which are a Cl minus. Now, what we would expect to see is that at the positive electrode, we're going to have a gas being formed, and we can see that with bubbles. Now, in order to test for the chlorine ions, we're going to hold a piece of blue litmus paper just above the anode. And what we should see, where the chloride ions have formed chlorine, the litmus paper is bleached. The bleached litmus paper shows a positive test for chlorine. At the cathode, I'll turn this off so we can see this, we should see that copper has started to form around the bottom of it. So where it was submerged in the copper chloride, copper metal has formed from the copper ions. At the anode, we will get chloride ions being attracted to that side. Chloride ions have a 1 minus charge and they will give up an electron. Chlorine travels around diatomically. In that case we will need two chloride ions being attracted to the anode, giving off two electrons to become a stable diatomic molecule. At the cathode, copper 2 plus ions are drawn towards the negative charge. Here they gain two electrons. This in turn forms copper metal as a solid. The diatomic chlorine forms as a gas. At the anode, where electrons are lost, the chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine gas. At the cathode, where they gain electrons, we have a reduction. Copper ions are reduced to copper metal. These are called half equations. They show what happens at each electrode. We're now going to do a test with sodium sulfate. Now, sodium sulfate contains a metal that is more reactive than hydrogen. Sodium, you can see, is far higher in the reactivity series than hydrogen is. Once again, making sure that the electrodes aren't touching, I'm going to put the electrodes into the sodium sulfate, making sure that the bottom of the electrode is covered again. I'm going to turn the circuit on so that the electrons can flow, and that should allow us to see a reaction starting. Now, this time we've got bubbles forming at both electrodes. At the negative electrode, we've got hydrogen forming. Now, the hydrogen formed in this experiment won't be enough to actually test it via our usual pop test. However, this time we've got oxygen formed, where something is less reactive than the chlorine or the halide ions, we get oxygen formed instead of the sulfate ions, which will stay in solution. They'll react and bond with the sodium ions and stay in solution. At the anode, we said we had oxygen being formed. Now these oxygen molecules are formed from the hydroxide ions in water. Now once again, because it's at the anode, we have an oxidation reaction 
taking place, where we have a loss of electrons. We know that the product is oxygen as a gas, and we also get electrons given off. However, the question is, what has happened to this hydrogen within the hydroxide ion? And with oxidation reactions involving hydroxide ions, we get water formed as an extra product. And that goes back into the solution within the electrolysis cell. We need to balance this. At present, we don't have enough oxygens from the hydroxide ions or hydrogens to fulfill the equation we have. So we have four hydroxide ions forming our oxygen and our water. Now, because we've got four negative charges on this side, we need to have four negative charges on this side. We now can balance the hydrogens. So we should have four hydrogens from the hydroxide ion going to form two lots of two hydrogen from the water. At the cathode, we said we had hydrogen being formed. H plus ions from the water gain electrons to form hydrogen gas. Now, once again, hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, so we need to balance this with equal numbers of hydrogens, but also equal numbers of charges. So with half equations, it's not important only to make sure that all the elements balance, but also that all of the charges balance within the equation.